Hello and welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I'm your host, Matthew Horky. So, uh, we are leaving Elok tomorrow and we're in our hotel uh, this evening and I want to just tell some stories today about our experiences so far in northern Serbia and northeastern Croatia. So, if you hear some music, it's because there's a birthday party for a bunch of eight-year-olds downstairs in the hotel restaurant. That's where the music's coming from. I'm not going to review wines today. I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens on a wine trip and tell some stories about each of these bottles. So the unfortunate thing, no, you look at it either way, fortunate, unfortunate. When you go on these wine tastings, I prefer personally where they have a setup where you can pay for the tasting or pay for a glass. Therefore, I feel no obligation, or Shereen and I feel no obligation to buy a bottle. But when you go to these smaller family-run wineries, uh, they let you taste everything. And they're opening all their bottles. And I feel that they don't, they're not going to take a tip. That's insulting. So what do you, you got to do? You got to buy some wine from them. Well, the problem is you're doing so many tastings that the bottles start to add up. So let me share a couple of stories for you. First of all, uh, here in Elok, uh, we have some wines from Elok, and then we have some wines from Serbia. Now, basically, these regions are pretty much similar climate. It, basically, they are the same climate. They're on the Fruskogorda Hill, and they're right next to each other. So, in a way, these wines are kind of the same, uh, just from different countries. I'm going to start here with Serbia, tell a little bit story about this. So, this was the first winery that we stopped in uh, in Serbia. It's called uh, Vinjadija Duka. Uh, you can't see this. I'm just going to show you that real quick. It's Italian Riesling. Uh, you see the all the Serbian words on it. So what happens is when we went to this family-run winery, he just walked in. It was a short guy, short old guy. He couldn't speak a word of English, and we just went, taste? Took us back in the cellar. Uh, the first thing he we tasted out of the stainless steel aging tanks, and he took one of the wine glasses, and the first glass he broke it against the stainless steel tank. So I felt kind of bad. Uh, in the end, we bought something from him, this Riesling in the cellar. It was only, I think it was like three US dollars for this bottle. So I'm gonna taste this a little bit while we're going over uh, some of the wines. The next step up, we went to another winery in Fruska Gorda uh, called Bello Bordo. This is their Chardonnay from 2012. First of all, their Chardonnay was excellent. I think I rated this one on Vivino as 4.5, but the cool thing is we were driving through town, and this is what happens a lot when you're on these wine trips, finding this winery. I drove around this small town, the small dusty half lane road, 35, 40, 50 minutes trying to look up where this winery was. Turns out the location on the website was wrong. I had to look out the number and call them. We eventually found the place. But the lady, I think it was his wife, didn't speak any English, but she let us open a ton of bottles. We ended up buying the Chardonnay because we felt bad. Let me take some of the Riesling. The Welsh Riesling is still quite good, especially for three U.S. dollars. The next story I want to tell, we moved over, we moved a little bit east into Elok, Croatia. And what was funny is the border was super, <laughs> the border was the weirdest crossing I'd ever seen. It was just a two lane road out in the middle of nowhere, just vines, farmland. And the police officer came out of this little shack and just opened up the gate by hand and then checked our passports. But we stopped in, this is also white wine country. But one night at dinner, we tried this wine from TRS. This is our Cabernet Franc from 2012. And this wine was awesome. So good that we had it two nights in a row. Usually when we're in wine country, we only have a wine once and then we gotta try everything else. We called them the next day. He walked us over to his winery, which is in his house. And he opened up all eight of his wines for us to try. So naturally we just had to buy one. We ended up buying, uh, we ended up buying this Grashavina, this Welsh Riesling from him in 2014, which was a tough vintage. And it was so nice. We bought this from him and he gave this to us as a gift. So we had to accept it, but then I felt bad because we have so much wine. Uh, the last story I have here from 
Ilok is this winery called Iv Ivan Buhatcha. I have to thank my friend Vidrim from Zagreb, Croatia for recommending this winery to us. 2014 was a tough vintage. He also takes a lot of pride in making Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. The cool thing about this guy, his dad that's his dad's name on the label, but the guy that makes the wine is a young guy, about my age, 31, I'm 33. And he took us into his winery and he only had 2000, he only had 60 bottles of the 2012 Merlot. He saved it because it was his nephew's birth year. And he ended up opening one of them and sharing with us there at the winery. So even though he said, don't buy the 2014 because it was a really bad year, I had to buy something from him because he supported us. Uh, <laughs> another funny thing is when we were in Ivan Buhach, he was giving us some samples out of the tank, and it was just a small sample. And he looked at me, uh, Shireen and I, he said, I'm not cheap, because he just poured a small tasting portion. He's like, I'm not cheap, I just don't want to get you too drunk. <laughs> so that was one of the highlights here in Elok. Uh, we have all this wine. We're going to try to carry it with us, maybe give it away as gifts for people we meet along the road. Maybe we'll have to just taste some and dump some out. But that's what happens when you're on a wine trip. I hope you like this video. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit about going on wine trips. Uh, my general rule of thumb, if it's not a big, huge winery with a big tasting room, you pay for glasses. If it's a small family one winery, you know what? Be classy. Number one, don't slam all the alcohol. Don't drink it all. You can taste it and dump some out. And buy a bottle. Support them. They're giving you all, the, all their time. Uh, this is their art. This is their craft kind of support what they're doing, especially if they're taking the time to show you all their wines. Now this video was a little bit longer. If you liked it, please share with your friends. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel. All of the wines that I sampled in Ilok and Fruskagora, Serbia, will be on my Vivino account, Vivino account, account in the uh, description box below. And I'll see you at the next episode.